this was purchased on eBay solely so we can take it apart and fit our servo motor upgrade to it. Uh, I'll go quick review on this lathe. It's actually not too bad. It is a typical three inch wide bad mini lathe. It has the typical motor in the back. Uh, it comes with, it actually comes with a set of cutters and of course the reverse chucks. It also comes with metal change gears. That's pretty cool. Uh, first thing I noticed is it's going to need a bushing put in the, uh, carriage. It's got the typical play everywhere in the housing and then we go to this is not switched it's just looks um where's the reverse switch okay so this came with one of the inside nuts missing There's your typical three quarter in three quarter horsepower motor in the back. The typical little skinny belt that usually blows. We'll get a little closer look on that. Uh, it does come with the um, digital display for the spindle. That's kind of nice. Uh, but realistically, this is just a typical mini lathe. The, the lowest cost uh, casting you can get. Uh, the reverse switch is here. Uh, we'll try it and see if it works, but you got to take that whole cover off to switch reverse Of course, everybody's gonna have the cover off all the time when they're using it All the main gears are already metal. That's kind of nice providing they're not noisy uh, We're gonna do some test runs and stuff pretty soon So we're plugged in now. We're gonna go ahead and power it up We're bright light, displays nice and clear. Well, first thing I gotta fix is that. I'll have to adjust it so it doesn't hit. Um, it's got a high pitch electronic whistle and it's got a lot of That's the motor screaming, so the motor's already on its way. Yeah, Hang on, let's check that. Get out these and see. disappointed about that because when I replace the motor and the control board on these with our upgraded version I can usually get about $150 for the old motor and the old control unit and this motor I can't sell because it's too noisy remember I said this was loose this is about listening hear that remember I said the carriage was loose Look how loose it is. That, that's like wow. Listen when I it's just knock, knock, knock. That, that's actually normal for these uh, mini lathes that you have to rebuild them from front to back when you get one. That's why I often tell people, you know what? Rather than buying a mini lathe and then spending a thousand dollars to fix it, why don't you just buy a lathe that's a lot better for a thousand dollars more and save all the headache. However, my answer is always, well, that's all that will fit. Well, there are other lathes you can get that are just a little bigger that are a whole lot better. Uh, although, unfortunately, now the price is double what they used to be. We have to take this apart, too, and see if we can fix that. So we're going to do that as well. This lathe will be for sale when it's done, by the way, and it'll be nice. As usual... The little ways 
Allen that hold them in place are just kind of loose. That way it's still everything runs when the retail buyer gets it. They think everything's okay, but nothing screwed together tight. That's why it works. They give you a set of Allen wrenches. They're normal. That way you can get in underneath here and tighten these. Next thing that's going to happen is when I tighten them, this is not going to move. There's supposed to be some grub screws in there so you can lock the two against each other to find the right point. We're going to try that. We check the bed with just a straight edge, just a old square, metal square. Uh, most of you probably have one for woodworking. It looks okay by eye, but the real truth is going to be when we get this so it doesn't wobble like this. Then we're going to find out whether the bed's straight uh, in all dimensions. So I took the first one off from under here. Three Allen with the short. Of course, there's no grub screws at all put in there. So as soon as you tighten this down, it just locks it up. If you try to use it the way it is, these just come loose. I suppose an option would be to clean them up and use Loctite. Uh, you can also see that it's rubbing here and here and not here. So this plate's not even straight. It's bent as well. We'll probably surface the plates and put the grub screws in and go from there. The back one looks better. Again, no grub screws, set screws. But at least it's running a little too. So we lift this off. There's actually a defect in this casting. It's missing part of the metal. Uh, it'll still work, but you can expect to run into defects like that often. This one is actually in the way they set up the sand casting. I don't know, maybe I'll file a complaint on that one too, but I mean, this this seller, he's going to lose all his money twice over if I try to go at him with all the parts on this lathe. He'll end up with two options. Well, he'll end up with a couple. He'll, you know, oh, give me your money back, forced by eBay, and I'll have to go look at the listing. Maybe it says buyer pays returns. Well, I don't want to pay shipping on the return because the shipping and return this is going to be half the cost of the lathe. Uh, if not all the cost of the lathe. Usually what they do is they offer you, you know, $50 off or $30 off. And I hate to be this kind of person, but you know, when they're selling junk and they're not intentionally selling junk, that's what it is. Uh, tell them to give you some money back. Usually you can get anywhere from 30 to $150 back off the purchase and that'll help you fix it. No matter where you buy this, you're going to have to fix it. If you buy it from Harbor Freight, or if you buy it from Northern Tool, or you buy it from Grizzly, you'll find that they have stricter quality control, and there'll be a lot less to fix. Although I got a Grizzly right over there, and it's not that great. So I surfaced the warped one. I cleaned up the one that was straight. The grub screw holes were like really tiny. I didn't have any grub screws. So I drilled them out at M6 and threaded them and put some Allen set screws in or some Allen screws. Same as the other ones. Uh, I can turn these in and they can be the high spot and these the other three can be the clamping. And that will allow me to hopefully adjust it. Let me take a closer look. Maybe not. Yeah, well, yeah, it'll work. It will just push this down from here a little bit and lock it in place. Now, realistically, perhaps a better way is to just fit shim stock in here. Get yourself an assortment of copper or brass shim stock and just put a thin one in first if it locks up a little thicker until you get it just right. That's what I do on the big lathe. Uh, and then it's locked in permanently uh, until it wears a lot, which eventually you'll have to change it. I might end up doing that here. We'll see if this works. So it's a balance between these two, which are pushing it away, and these three that are pushing it towards. It's pretty good. There's a slight bit of looseness, but look, it binds. It still runs good right here. 
then it binds when it gets out here. I think I'm going to try to loosen it up just a little bit. Right here. If it was my lathe, I'd leave it that way. Because I'm never going to operate out there, but somebody else might. There, that's pretty good. How about play? Yeah, too much. Okay, there's almost nothing on that side. It binds right there, but tailstock is going to be there. That's a pretty good cutting range. <sighs> Look at that. There's. Well, let's get the dial mic. So we got two and a half thousandths here. If we move it farther out. We have no play. That means this is two and a half thousand thinner here than it is here where this way is holding against it. Okay, so what we did is we filed underneath here this flat, because this is right against the V here, there's nothing we can do. So we cut the clamp inside, we filed and cleaned it up a little bit, we didn't spend too much time. We also changed this so it's kind of tipping at an angle a little bit. We got Two thousandths play here, and we got travel to about there. Then it starts to bind. So this is going to be the cutting range of this lathe. We're going to do the back side the same way. I'm not going to do a video on it. Update: In order to fit this underneath the carriage, these screws have to be these have to be short, and this one has to be an Allen set screw so that that gear can run right there. Okay, we got, that's well within tolerance for such a lousy machine. All the knocking and locking is gone. That was everything wobbling around. And it was the half nut was banging into this. By adjusting this, we were able to make it run nice and smooth. And it works okay there too. This is actually not bad. This the problem it's hard to turn and it locks up so we're going to work on that next first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace this handle with this little handle you can get this handle on amazon there's two different sellers there's the one that has the little digit numbers on it i've had really bad experiences with that guy he's in china he says he's here in the usa it'll be here in three days no it'll be here in 30 if you're lucky if you get in at all these are there sometimes, sometimes they're not. I used to make really beautiful handles for these out of aluminum. They actually are much better than this. But they take all day to make a set of handles. And that means a set of handles would be $800 if I was to actually charge what my time's worth. This is 10 bucks. So this is what we're going to use. I cleaned it up in a little bit, but this is sticking. Right there, every turn, and this is wobbling, which means this shaft's probably bent. I'm not going to worry about it right now. i got to get to the mod so we can mark it the mod. This needs a lock screw in here. Drill it, thread it. This carriage needs a lock screw. It looks like it's already designed for one. It's got the hole right there. Uh, I've set this at estimated 45. I might mark that off later. We're going to try to do the chuck run out now. So I'm getting ready to try to put some stock in there and I figure I'm going to chuck up one of these carbide cutting tools that came with the lathe. And look, the metal goes out past the carbide chip, which means this is just going to jam and grunge. It's not even going to work at all. I'm going to have to go fix that first. Got a piece of true stock at 20 millimeters OD. 
It's definitely 20 millimeter through. Uh, we'll check it out and see what's going on. See if we can cut something with it. See what, what it looks like for a first try. Don't look too bad. It almost looks center. It might actually go. This. If this is my labor, I'm throwing that away. Let's try to make the first cut. All right. Okay, so the cutter's too high, it's misaligning. That cutter's gonna be too high no matter what I do. Because the cutter's too thick for it. Which means you would never be able to cut anything with that cutter on this lathe. So the carbide cutters that came with the lathe will not work with the lathe because they sit too high up on the center. Obviously these cutters don't go with the lathe. In order to get it down, I put together a little piece of high-speed steel. It's a real basic cutter. It's thinner, and I've made a shim so that it'll sit in there, and it'll come down, oh, about a sixteenth of an inch with the shim, and about an eighth of an inch without the shim, and see if we can get a cut yet. Let's stick this out a little farther. Man, you imagine that somebody that doesn't know what they're doing gonna gonna learn to run a lathe and they buy one of these things. I've got about five to six hours already setting this machine up just to make it work before it's even gonna start working. And I know what I'm doing. You put an amateur on this machine, which is most likely to buy it. I don't know, but if it was me, you wouldn't want to be in the garage because you could hear me from three houses down. And it wouldn't be good. Well, we got a cut. I'm certainly not impressed, but at least we got a cut. Got a vibration. Chatter. Hear that screeching? That's the motor failing. Okay, so the lead screw's too fast, the cut's too rough, that's a rounded tip, it shouldn't be rough like that. Okay, we've taken the uh, all the gears off so we can eliminate all the gear noise that you were hearing in the previous videos. That's the motor noise, brush noise from the motor. We'll address that later. Right now, we're going to work on the gear noise. One of the two is they got this detent set in the wrong spot, so these gears are chattering. I'll try to move that detent up, but I mean, it's grilled pretty bad already. I might have to replace the plate. This is for a different lathe. It's almost the same. I can make it work. So we drilled that detent, like I said, got this sitting a little higher, that moves this gear a little farther away, and... Now the howl is still the motor. That little bit of chatter you hear from the gear is just that. That's okay. Next we're going to do the other gears. The intermediate gear on and the first large gear for the lead screw. 
You can always want to have some play in here. I don't know if you can see that. You don't fit these tight or they're going to be noisy and they're going to wear fast. Put just a little bit of wheel bearing grease on it. It's not sling free grease. It's what I got. All we got now still is normal gear noise and of course the motor still howling. End result with metal gears all installed, a little bit of grease. The chatter noise, not the howling noise. That's awfully loud. That's all we're going to get with the metal gears. I think I'm going to put a couple plastic ones in and eliminate the noise. Okay, so we got a plastic gear off a of Grizzly. They come with a three millimeter keyway. We had to broach it out to a four to fit it. Uh, put that one in between the metals to try to improve the noise and... That's engaged TK, disengaged. The least screw is way better. Uh, it's still got that damn howl noise from the motor. Okay, so we chucked in up a known true piece of 20 millimeter diameter aluminum stock uh, that I machined true before I put it in the lathe. Set it up. Uh, nothing else done to the chuck. We're finally back to working on the chuck. We have 2000s run out, and I have to say for a mini lathe, that's way better than expected. Most of them are three and a half to about seven. Uh, so this isn't too bad. We're going to see if we can make it a little better. It's supposed to be a chuck key safety. It's supposed to shut the lid off if you open it. It's not. Let's see if we can power the lid up. Yeah, wide open. Just by turning it on with that up. So obviously it's worthless. First thing we're going to do is see if there's a favorite single tightening point. So we're going to set it up. And this one is, that's going to be number one right now. So this one is just before it. Yeah, 2000. And this one is just after. Notice it's uh, one, two, it's four thousand, three and a half thousand. So tightening that one is worse. Indicator mark, that was this one. So this is the only other one. There's three tightening spots. That one is one and a half thousand. That's actually intolerant. I'm not even going to index this. I'm going to go with right there. This is it. So that is the mark. First one, the second one. Let's try it again. Even better. That's one thousandth. That's intolerance for a commercial aid, actually. So we're going to mark that. Indicator, first one, second one. So we're going to put a T right here telling me this is the one you tighten it with. So that's marked as a T. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to double check these. And instead of just having an indicator dot, we're going to put the actual two counts that go in. So that should be one, two, and three. That's where it came originally. So they probably did some kind of truing before they shifted. Okay, so we labeled the... Chuck jaws, three, two, one. Tight, tightening torque center. Didn't index it, didn't need to. We're set up with a piece of stock. It's inch and a half, I believe. And we're gonna do a test cut, see what we come up with. And of course, it's gonna be a little bit out of round when we first put it in. That's kind of normal, because it's not a true stock in the first place. We're actually starting to see some performance here. They 
it's still got a little bit of ridge. That's still too fast. I don't have the right gear to change that. We're gonna do another cut. Cutting speed should be about 800. We're gonna set it up at 1300. We're gonna put this in one, two, three, four, five, six thousand and see what it does. Okay, that's about the max I think we're going to get out of it. It's still got a, a lumpy ridge on it. That would be fixed by better cutter. Maybe tighten up the bed a little bit more. Definitely some locks on the carriage so you can lock whatever piece is not moving so it doesn't vibrate or shudder. There's a vibration noise, but this lathe is at the point where we're going to consider it done as the average user would get to and then next we're going to do the motor mod i will continue it with this video but it will be a separate video because it's going to be instructions for upgrading the motor on this lathe 